good morning, good evening, uh, depending on where you are watching from. Thank you so much for joining me, Victoria Crafty, Woman of Influence. Uh, last week, we were talking about um, what is appropriate uh, age for your teenager to start dating. As a parent, what are you comfortable with? It, it was such an awesome, awesome show. I love it myself. So we're going to continue today and uh, we're going to look at some things and really explain ourselves on some areas so that um, we won't be kind of one way, but it will be all around because it's also important for them to build friendship. So how are we going to balance it? That's what we're going to talk today. And I have a surprise for you. So we don't want to miss it so please take a minute of your time take your device wherever you're watching from and share the video for me tag somebody to come in because i know it's going to be um a blessing to you i i, I don't know whether um you have a teenage in the house or you are a grandmother which you still have to talk to your 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 teenagers or you are just um maybe your children are very young like five six you know ten guess what one day they will be a teenager so everybody need to watch this show because it's something that we all will go to i i am going to i have two in my house uh so please uh, share the video for me tag somebody uh to come in right now let them know that woman of influence is on let them uh, know that Woman of Influence is on. So please uh, share the video, tag, tag your friends uh, to come in. Let me use just a few minutes of my time and, and share uh, the video. So please let all share it right now. You know, uh, if you are sharing, I'm sharing. Then when we get into the show, um, we can focus on just looking at you instead of looking at my video. Uh, so uh, help me right here to share it. I'm very, very, very grateful that um, you are joining me today. So thank you so, so, so much for joining me uh, today. It's going to be a blessing. Please, if you have a teenager in the house, I want to hear from you. Or you, last week, I have a lot of you contributing to the show and it really make it very, an awesome uh, thing. So um, if, if you want to share your thought, well, that's how you raised your, your teenager, what was, um, uh, what was done, what wasn't done, what you allow in your house, what you didn't allow in your house. I think if you share that with me, that would be a blessing. But once again, I'm so, so, so grateful. And I thank you so, so much um, for joining uh, me, joining me today. The sound is low. Can we increase it a little bit? Because I think I'm talking with my large voice. Hallelujah. If you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up. Um, is the sound okay? Can we check whether the sound is okay? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, please continue to share the video and, and tag your friends, you know, to come in. Um, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you once again. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you so, so much. Uh, share it in a group if if you are in a group. Uh, Uriah is not very active on 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 Facebook. On Facebook so, <laughs> um, she doesn't have anything to share, <laughs> but I'm sharing right now. Just give me a few minutes. Let me share it in all these groups here. Um, share it uh because it's it's something today we're going to talk about standard what standard have you set home and um what are you comfortable really as a parent uh last week we we look at some percentage and sixteen i think have seventy four percent so seventy four percent uh percent of people um are comfortable their children dating at 16 then it jumped to 14 that was 23 but you as a parent what are you um comfortable uh at uh, when it comes to uh dating so last week 
uh, most of my people were between 16, uh, pay the parents that watched with me, uh, some say 16, uh, but the majority actually was 18. You know, the majority of, of uh, parents I watched last week were saying that 18 because of uh, the maturity aspect, you know, of eight. And we really want to understand that our need uh, for others is God-given need. So our need for others is God-given need. God didn't create us by ourselves. We are you know, we are supposed to depend on each other. So even Genesis chapter 2 verse 28 says, uh, God says that it's not good for us to be alone, okay? And God created us to be inter-independent. So it's, n it's not wrong for your teenager to get to a point and think that, okay, I need, you know, to date or I need a friend. And most of the time, we as parents, we encourage our children, oh, make friends. Why are you not making friends? Uh, you don't, you know, you don't have anybody as a friend. Make friends. But we don't even teach them how to make friends. It's like we throw them out there, go and make friends. But do we really take our time to teach them how to make friends? You know, so those are some of the things that we have to start practicing as parents. But it's not wrong for them to get to a point in their life that they think they need a friend or they think they need somebody a little bit closer, you know, than a friend. So today I want to take my time and define what a dating is because most of the time, uh, some of our teenagers don't even understand the word dating. And the world that we live in now look like when we say dating, it means that go and sleep with somebody. That's, that's how it sounds like. But dating is not to go and sleep with somebody. You know, dating is a, the initial step, like the, the, the steps that you take to study somebody, you know, to get to understand the opposite sex how the boys behave, how the girls behave, the opportunity to know somebody closer, okay? And it's, it's very, very important because then you will, you will know the person that, you know, like, like typically when you are in school with somebody and it's just classroom, you see them, oh, hello, how are you? Then you go, you sit at your desk, you finish school, how are you, you go. But once you start building a friendship with a person, you get to know because you hang up going to the movies, you go here, you go there, and it's really help you to know them. So it's not wrong to date, but do we understand it and do it uh, uh, according to how we have to deal with it. So that's very, very important. That the Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, uh, chapter 40, it says that let all things be done decent and in order, okay? So as parents, we have to explain this to our children. It's not that we don't want them to date, but when they are going to do this dating, they have to do it in a very decent way and in the order that it needs to be. And last week, I think we spoke about we talking to them, Take time and talk to your children before they even come to you about those things. Because once you talk to them and you guys understand each other, it really, really helps you to let them know, oh, okay, when you get to 18, when you get to 19, you can date here and there, but make sure that you are doing it according to, you are getting to know this person, you are collecting data, you are having fun, but not to cross to the other side because we can also not forget that those who cross to the other side with that understanding, that's when we have a lot of high-risk teenage uh, pregnancy out there. So we cannot forget uh, that one too. So uh, when you talk about dating, you also want to talk about the purpose, okay? The purpose of dating. What is the purpose of dating? You know, it's, it will help them to have a right choice. Okay, a right choice in life. We also have to uh, understand that 
with their friendship, all the friends that they will make in high school, in college, and all those places. Those are the same people that one day God will bless them with, the friendship they're making in church, the friendship they're making, you know, in school and all those things. Those are the people out of it. They will find the right partner for them. Okay, so that, that we, you have to explain the purpose for them. It's to build friendship. And I, I said earlier, sometimes we tell our children, go and make friends. But do we really explain to them how to make friends? So dating helped them to build friendship. It helped them to open communication. Okay, open communication. They get to talk about some things that maybe they are classmates, but they won't have the opportunity to talk about. But once they start, you know, going, uh, seeing each other. Then it helped them with open communication and it's helped them to uh, discover, you know, common interests that they have because the best uh, marriage you can have, the best partner you can have is your best friend. You want to marry to your best friend. So somebody you have uh, walk with, talk with, like just mere friends, that and that, you know, one day you get to know, ah, we all have common interests. So why not, you know, um, turn to something else? And you, you, we, we have seen a lot of people that out of high school class and all those funny, funny things they do, they end up being a good partner to each other. So today, that's what we are going to look at. But I have a surprise for you here. I have my own Uriah Kwepi who have just returned from school. So uh, Woman of Influence helped me to welcome you real crappy. Hi everyone. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you raised here, you were 18. Last week I spoke a little bit about her uh, in my show because I mean they are my, my example, you know, apart from me being a person, some teenagers coming to me, my example is them, you know. So last week I, I spoke about them a little bit and I put their less here and there. But today she is here and we are going to uh, talk about some things that I think that her um, uh, input to will really help. But before I ask you a question, I want us to talk about maturity because last week it came in that you have to consider uh, the emotional maturity and the sense of responsibility for your teenager. Okay, so we have to consider how matured they are. And in considering how mature they are, it doesn't come with age. Because sometimes you see a typical 18-year-old who is not matured, okay? So when you are considering um, the time that you think is appropriate for them to start dating, you have to consider the way they see and understand things, okay? Maturity is not just in age. But how do they see things? How do they understand things? They are going to call somebody a best friend. How, did, how is their own emotional strength? How do they understand that? Okay, if I'm going to be close with somebody, I have to make sure that I'm handling the person very well so that the heartbreak and all those things will not come in. So they are, they are, they are, the way they see things and the way they understand things is very crucial when you are considering the maturity level of your child and the way they consider each other. You know, sometimes we are all selfish in a way. Every, every human being is selfish. We all think about ourselves. But when it comes to a, a decent and a very healthy relationship, selfishness cannot be number one key. The, the, the reason why a lot of people are not able to sustain their marriage, sustain their friendships, sustain all those things is because of selfishness. Because if you want to really, really um, be in the good books of somebody, you have to consider the person first in so many ways. Okay? So how are your teenagers when it comes to consideration for each other? Are they so selfish, everything about themselves? everything about themselves, or they consider others. That is a very good thing that you want to look at, like, uh, to. And the way they communicate. Are they good communicators when it comes to it? So thank you once again for joining me. Please uh, use a few minutes of your time 
and share the video with somebody. Tag somebody to come in. I know it's going to be a blessing. Please, if you have any question, please ask. Those of you who uh, your, your children just get uh, to 13 and 14 and those things, you want to ask some uh, pretty questions because it's going to help. And you really see it. You are going to help me to answer most of your wonderful, wonderful questions. So you were, once again, thank you so much. Thank mm. you for coming. <laughs> thank you for sitting mm. in Woman of Influence chair. No so let me ask you this question. In your view, what, what do you think is a good uh, uh, age to date, in your view? Um, I think the best time is like 18. Okay. Well, first, because like 18, ooh, it's such a nice number. You're legally able to vote. You can get charged then as an adult. So that just like ups the maturity. Okay. At 16, I know girls would be mature, but boys are not mature at 16. They okay. are not. They <laughs> will be playing. Why are you saying that? <laughs> <laughs> you are pulling the boys in here right now. I wish I have a boy sitting here. They're not. Okay. Because, like, I was surrounded by boys, okay. especially when they were 16. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, Judah. Yeah. Not <laughs> mature. I mean, he's mature in other things, but when it comes to women, probably not mature. Okay. Um, like, especially people at my school at 16, no. Like, I could not imagine, like, dating someone at 16 because, first off, the girls who were dating at 16 were always dating someone older than them. Okay. Because they had the maturity on how to, like, deal with girls, especially, like, with feelings and how to deal with people. But boys at 16, they just don't know how to deal with people. Okay, so for you, you think 18 is a good yeah, number? Yeah, because I think that's when boys are starting to mature. Even still, they're low-key not mature, <laughs> but they're starting to <laughs> get common sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the age is... Because uh, last week, most of our uh, parents who were viewing, uh, I think 18 was the good number, you know, for them for... Uh, to considering mm -hmm. um, dating, okay? Mm -hmm. But don't you think that sometimes people date maybe early because of what they are exposed to or because of the pressure, because like everybody mm -hmm. is, is doing it. So what do you think about pressure, uh, pressure when it comes to uh, teenage dating? Um, so like in high school, um, yeah, there would be like couples and stuff, but it would mm. just be like Valentine's Day when you see everyone's getting like hearts and uh, candy and these big like grand gestures from their boyfriends. And you're just like, oh, I would like to have that. Like, mm. you know, girls just like probably for girls, they would like to be in a relationship for the benefits. Okay. More of like, you know, you get treated nicely you get um mm -hmm. you get to go on dates they get to buy you stuff and stuff and like all of that but like they're not really in it for the like the long run because i think mostly for dating especially when you're dating in college now you're starting to go off on your own you're probably when you graduate from college you're gonna apply for an apartment or get a house like when you're in a relationship in college you're literally going for the long run because mm -hmm. even in my friend group my friend she met her boyfriend on the first day and he has already taken her to go meet the parents and everything so they're more or less starting to become more serious okay. and going in for the long run as like versus high school you're like oh I just want like candy and attention and all that stuff so how if you are then so the high school is more about what they will get. Is that what you are talking about yeah, now? Basically. So how important, if maybe your daddy give you all that? Mm -hmm. If your dad gives you all that, you wouldn't really need to do that because you're already getting like, um, like the main reason why I would feel so lonely on um, Valentine's Day is because you and dad would have somebody and I would just go to school and everyone's all coupled up and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm really alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh. And I think one of the most touching things that you did, I was really feeling lonely on Valentine's Day and you gave out 
like these little candy hearts to me and I was like wow someone really cares because if you're already getting that from your parents you really wouldn't need to find it somewhere else okay wow that's that's very good please uh if you are watching us I'm talking with my own my this is my first born Uriah Crepe uh thank God for her life she's encouraged she just uh, came home and I was ta I'm talking about teenagers so I, I saw it fit to ask her some, put her on the spot and ask her some questions. As uh, she's 18, she haven't started dating yet. And maybe she will start dating, I don't know, but she haven't started dating yet. But uh, last week, most of the parents that were watching the show, I think 18 was actually the best number, the best age that they thought that is very comfortable because then there's no distraction when it comes to high school and all those things, which we are going to talk about uh, right now. Uh, we just uh, spoke about pressure and what Yuria was saying was very good because sometimes, you know, when, and, and last week I said it, let's make our home, let's set a standard home for them. So when they get some, some things that need to be done, then they won't go and seek it out there. So it's very, very important. We have a question. It says that, do you feel dating early uh, affect a teenage life in a negative way? Do you feel uh, dating, you know, early affect, can affect a teenage life? Well, if you're dating a person who's not, like, mature, uh -huh. yes, that can affect you negatively. Okay. Like, for example, um, my friend from college, she dated someone who wasn't really mature, mm -hmm. and he would um, play games with her, and it, effect, it like, affected her self-esteem okay. and her confidence in a negative way to the point that we're also constantly reassuring her. And because of that person... Now she, when she's looking for other people, she dates people that are literally like that man who are toxic and not mature and won't give her like the attention that she needs. And so um, I don't think like dating early would negatively like affect you, but it depends on who you date at that time. And usually boys when you're dating early or even girls when you're dating early aren't usually that mature okay. to understand the dynamics of a relationship you yeah know? and I, I think uh, last week we we spoke about I think it was sister Julie who brought it up that she didn't really encourage dating in her house because of distraction and uh, personally I 100% support that because I was even using my home as a some as an example that you know it caused distraction it, it just caused distraction in high school there's a lot of things you know they are now discovering by themselves uh, there's a, a, a lot of education going on that they need to get it right so I mean for me what do you need it for and that's when the purpose sometimes comes in and sometimes when they come to you and and they they tell you okay I, I have a boyfriend or I need a boy a girlfriend. Just take your time and talk to them and, and ask them why. Because sometimes when you ask them why, they their reason and even the meaning is another thing. They don't even know what they are talking about. So I think it's it's really not encouraging, you know, it's not encouraging, especially when it comes to a Christian home. When it comes to a Christian home, you know your standard. And last week, my mom said something that really, when I was uh, watching the, the show, uh, uh, you know, after, and I, I saw her comment, it really blessed me. God told Abraham that, I know you will raise your, your children well, okay? That can God trust you as a parent, especially you that you know Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Can God trust you and say that he knows you very well, that you will raise the people in your home well. You understand? So we have to set some standard in our home for them that it will really help them going forward to uh, take some steps. So, I mean, dating early, you know, like the 13, the 14, the 15, and even some 16s that um, is out there like 74%. You as a Christian, 
would you feel comfortable your son or your daughter dating, assisting? Are they emotionally mature to handle the pressure that comes with it? What is the purpose of it? Why do they want? Is it friendship? If it's friendship, are you not a friend enough to them? You know, if it's companion, is your husband not, you know, hugging them and kissing them enough? You know, why are they going, seeking that extra attention if they can get all the attention in the house, in home? You know, if daddy can take them out once a while, whatever you do to make them feel like, hey, whatever you need out there, I can give it to you. So that the pressure is not there for them to go. Because you were just mentioning, you know, like Valentine, they go to school and all this, you know, uh, balloons and everything. And they come home and nothing is on. Can you, what is a box of chocolate? But she said I gave her a box, a box of chocolate. I do it every Valentine. I just get it for them. What is a, how much is a box of chocolate that you cannot give to them for them to go and seek it out there? So I think our parents' skills too really need to be upgraded, especially those of us from Africa. Please, we are in America. Let's try to upgrade ourselves a little bit. <laughs> we have a question here. How could you help a teen that is already dating and sexually attract, attractive? Active? Hey, sexually active. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to be able to, to help a teenager who is already dating, okay, mm -hmm. and is sexually active? What kind of advice can you give to, to her right now or him right now? Do you see a future with this person okay. to be giving it up? Because, like, usually some people are just going to take it and go. Mm -hmm. But, like, I personally wouldn't do it because I'm just, like, in the long run, I know this is not going to last. Okay. So, like, um, most people, like, they would just give it up in six months. Oh, they're and like they're gone mm -hmm. and especially i don't know it's like boys move on faster and the girls will be boohooing yeah till this day about <laughs> this man <laughs> and this guy is just living his best life mm -hmm. on to the next girl and i'm like for the girls don't simp just you have most of the time girls are very mature so you can like really handle it but when it comes to like um, being sexually active in a relationship for the girls don't do that because I know especially if you're in high school it's not gonna last mm. it's not gonna last that long it's it's just a fleeting moment and like once again when you guys break up you're gonna be the one in pieces mm. and this dude is gonna be living his best life with the next chick yeah <laughs> you know this 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 is uh this is something else you know um i think last week i mentioned it that dating is not you know the tickets for you to go and sleep with somebody the dating we are talking about here would for us to allow our teenagers is to build a good friendship you know, it's to get to know somebody. It's get to understand somebody. Open communication, uh, you know, um, common interest. What, what, what is your interest? What is my interest? That's what we are talking about. We are not talking about you going to sleep with somebody because once you cross the line, please, you are not dating. Forget about it. Don't, don't tell me I'm dating. You are dating what? You are not dating when you are sleeping with somebody. It's not dating. Okay, you have crossed the line. You, you really have crossed the line. And as you were said, I'm telling you, whatever you are doing now is a foundation of your future. Okay, it's a foundation of your future. And if you are just a teenager and you are now sleeping around, it's not going to help you in any way. You are a Christian, you are sinning. It's against your body. The Bible says our body is the temple of the living God. It's against your body. It's against God. It's not going to help you. It's God who helped all of us to be where we are now. And if you are sinning against the same God who is going to help you, 
for you to have a good and a wonderful future, then that future is not guaranteed. So if you are doing that, I just want to use woman of influence to tell you, please stop. It's not going to take you anywhere. It's, it's not going to take you anywhere. I've done that, seen that, I've heard that. I've, I've, you know, so many people have come to me and I, I tell them, once you sleep with this guy, forget it. And it's like, sometimes, it's like I prophesy because two, two months later, they will come with their face straight and I think you have given them, them le lemon juice to drink. It didn't work because I said it. Why? It's not like I, I knew it was going to happen, but it will happen because, you know, the reason why a, a, a man, because just sleeping with a boy is even waste of your time. But even the reason why a man will want to see your parents and ask your parents for your, your hand in marriage and all those things is to have you for themselves, okay? If you are giving them whatever they, they are going to pay the price for, they are going to give you the respect for, respect for your parents, to even take you to your parents, that's a sign of respect. And if they, do, they don't respect you, they won't respect your parents. So if you are giving all these things to them, why should they, you know, respect you? And we are going to, maybe next week, we, we'll talk about cohabiting. When you, are pray, you, when you are behaving like a wife and doing all those foolish things, but you are not. It's, it's just waste of your time. It's just waste of your time. I've seen a lot of people that sometimes is so sad. And you tell them, they think, oh, because you are married and you are in your home and everything, so you, you are against them. No, no, I'm not against you, but it's not going to work. That's why it's not working. That's why you are so single after now. Because it's not going to work. Because you are not doing it the right way. But you as a teenager doing it right now, please, it's a waste of time. Just, just stop it and come back, come back to life. Okay, come back, enjoy your teenage years. Enjoy what makes you a teenager. Stop trying to grow because you will grow and you will regret. Because once you, you get to 25, 30, you will ask yourself, you want to be 17 again. Sometimes I wish I can go back and, and be a teenager. <laughs> but here I am. So please, don't rush. Just take your time. Enjoy your, your, your teenage years. And don't give yourself so cheaply. You are not. You are not. You are very wonderful, you know, bought by a price. God loves you so much. So if there are boys telling you, I love you, I love you. If nobody have tell you, I love you. So you, any boy tell you, I love you, you take your underwear off. You are just fooling yourself. Please stop. It's not going to help you, all right? It's, it's, just, it's, <laughs> it's just not going to help you at all. So, you know, stop it. But you will, uh, how important is the relationship between the parent and their team? How important is the relationship between a parent and their team? Because all these things, sometimes they, they fall victim mm -hmm. of maybe that is not in the house. Or maybe there is not that great, you know, communication or great relationship between parents. So they go out there and seek for things that they could have gotten at home. How important is, is that? I think it's very important because first off, your parents are like your example of what you want in the relationship or mm. what you don't want in the relationship. And most like girls usually date boys that have some mm -hmm. attributes that their dad has. Like, you don't do it on purpose, but, yeah. like, <laughs> it's, like, kind of what you're attracted to okay. sometimes. So, like, I think um, it is very important, especially if you're communicating with your parents. Mm. Like, parents need to communicate with their children. Yeah. Don't let your child go out blind. Okay. Please don't. Because, like, I think we started communicating later on. But, like, when I was 14, 15... And even like when um, close, getting closer to 16, I was like, everyone's already started dating. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. But like at the same time, I was like, no, because 
I don't think it's allowed in my house. Even though apparently I was allowed to date like at 16, I was just like, I thought it was never welcome. So I just never really went for it. But when I, it was my senior year, I did like um, talk to a boy for a good long time. Like he was my friend. And when he told me that he liked me, I didn't know how to deal with it because I never talked to my, <laughs> I, I, I was never like, <sighs> I didn't know how to deal with this. So I ghosted. And I never talked to him again. Yeah. Now you yes. know why not. <laughs> I, told, I told my dad about it. And my dad was telling me about how I should deal with it. And I was like, I wish you told me this before I started talking. So I would have known how to deal with it. Because we still could have been friends. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Very important. <laughs> very yeah, important. Yeah, it's very, very important. Please. Yeah, to tell. You know, sometimes as parents, sometimes you you assume that they know, you know, but it's, 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 they don't, they don't know. It's you still, new territory. Yeah, yep. it's, it's still um, very important that, you know, you talk about it. I remember when I get to know this, we were all, I, I mean, it became a laugh, you know, in the house, we were laughing and everything because the, the circumstances and everything were so funny. Like, how do you just freeze on somebody and just <laughs> vanish? <laughs> You know, like that. And you went to school, you saw the person coming and you passed the exam. I don't know. <laughs> you know, these are somebody, some, a person that you have been talking to, you know. But that's what I was saying earlier. You know, sometimes we tell our, our children, because I remember I keep on telling her, you have to make friends. You know, you have to make friends. But sometimes we tell them, make friends, make friends. But we don't even show them how to make friends, you know? So we are telling them all these good things. Just go and make friends, you know, make sure you, you, you are good, you behave good with people and all those things. But sometimes I think it's good to sit down and really, how do you make a, the opposite, you know? How do you make friends with the opposite sex? How do you carry yourself when boys are there? You know, what, how do you communicate, you know, and all those things. We have to... I find time and talk to them about it. I mean, talking is everything, and I, and and we really have to because it's 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 just funny. For me, it has happened in my house, so I I knew how you know going forward. I I now do it more with even Judah, who is a boy, than even Yuri, who was a girl. You know, so it, we we learn as parents, you know, because when that thing happens, I'm like, oh, okay. So I really have to, you know, boost my pen up when it comes to them and talk to them one on one on those things. So it's very, very important that uh, we do that, especially my African parents. I know when we were growing up, it was a taboo. I know we didn't have anything like that. We, we were not exposed to anything like that. I don't remember ever remember talking to my dad or my mom about that. I don't because it never happened. How sometimes we were able to survive some, some, some things. When I sit down right now and I think about it, I'm like, how did I survive all these things? You know, I didn't know anything, but yet, by the grace of God, we were able to, you know, do some things. And now we, we, we learning to even do it better with our children. You know, but that, that's what I'm telling you. If, if you are African parents and you live in America, you really have to know. And even our Caribbean, my Caribbean uh, family too, and, and some of you, it wasn't like that. But we really have to learn right now, know the environment we live in, know um, the, the culture we live in, and try and create, you know, a home that is very, um, you know, wonderful that our children can come to us and talk about anything. You know, I think it's, it's very important we do that. Um, any questions, please, if you have any questions, if you have any contribution, um, uh, we will take. Uh, thank you so much. You were how important is this again when it comes to setting a standard home? You know, because... For you, for instance, you say that when you, you were assisting and all those things, you were compared. You know that, okay, I, 
I'm seeing everybody maybe doing it, I want to do it. But then you look at where you're coming from, you look at your home and the standard we have set and the way we live as a family, you know that, hey, this is no go zone. So how important it is, you know, when it comes to, especially Christians, okay? Because after the world, it, it's, 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 I, was, I was doing some research. It's, 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 I mean, this is not a, even a talk about thing. They just give a condom to you. Uh, just take it in case, you know, it happened. Just take it. But we as Christians cannot do that. We cannot do that. So how important it is, you understand, for us to, the, the standard we set in our home. So at least it will help our children to know what to do and what not to do. How important is that? Oh, well, it is very important. And okay. honestly, you just, you kind of get the feeling from your parents. Like, especially the way you grow up. Like, especially um, if you have, like, older siblings and how they were dealt with when they were dating. Mm -hmm. Or, like, um, older cousins and how they were dealt with when they were also dating. You kind of yeah. just get an example of how you go about it. Mm -hmm. But since I was, like, the first one, yeah, I, I, was, the test, so many I was the test subject. I was the test subject. So, like, anything mm -hmm. that I was doing, I was just going to be the example of what not to do or what to do mm. for my siblings. So, like, honestly, when I was 16, first off, I didn't like nobody in, like, school because, like, everyone was annoying um <laughs> uh second um i didn't think i was allowed to date even though i was told that at 16 i could date but i wasn't that like, was from no, your daddy no for me one, it was no 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 one told me <laughs> exactly see no for one, me it was no 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 we spoke it about it me it was yeah so that's why it after was after <laughs> see like i was like i'm not mm. even sure if i'm allowed to mm. so i'm just not going to and then when 17, 18 came around, I was like, I'm ready to get out of the school. Mm. I, I think I was thinking, like, probably I'll start dating in college. And then you go to college, and it's just the same boys from high school. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess when the Lord brings me a man, I'm just going to go for it. But, but like, now that, now that I'm, like, communicating with you guys, I knew that my um whoever i bring home has to be approved by you guys because you guys are very right all the time you guys say things and when it comes to pass i told you this all the time mommy is always right and you're gonna hate it when she's right so i usually want to i want to bring someone who is approved by you and daddy first and then i'm fine and because like but I have something to say. Here. What? When you see a man, mm -hmm. can't you, like, don't you know what you need from him? Whether he's a Christian, he mm -hmm. goes to church, yes. he has to accept Christ yes. and his Lord and person, mm -hmm. all those stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it your own standard? That's, just, yeah, that's just my take standard. Us from, oh, I know, I, that's my standard, of okay. course. Okay. And then, but. He could be doing all that and you guys may find something wrong and i'm like it may be a gut feeling or something okay. that you guys okay. have and that's what i want to listen to because usually when you say something mommy you don't even realize this when you say something i'm like oh my gosh he said this two years ago and it came to pass and you're gonna hate it because you didn't <laughs> listen to your mom <laughs> so like usually i just want to I'm now I'm gonna, like at this point in time I'm like you guys have been my age before mm -hmm. so I have not been your age so like I will literally have to listen to you because you've been here before you've been at the place I'm at okay so there is a question with where we are right now what if the person is not safe but want to date you what is your standard when it comes to that I think that's so difficult because um the boy I was talking to who wasn't saved, but I was always talking about me going to church and all this stuff. And the fact that, like, he was, like, he was talking to me and we were talking about faith and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I go to church all the time and I'm really um, advocate in my faith and stuff. And he was like, um, one time he did break down to me and he was like, I do feel an emptiness and I'm 
thinking about going to church and I was like inviting him to my church and I feel like if they're open to coming to church with me and like um going I would mean yes Mm-hmm. But I think that is another road that you have to be really steadfast in your faith, okay. so you're not swayed mm-hmm. by them to like lose your track with God. Like you have to be really steadfast. Like so, it's not for people who are like weaker in their faith. It's more for people who are stronger in their faith to like stay like on the set track with God. Yeah. So. I think it depends on you. It depends. It depends on you. Oh, okay. I mean, I, 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 that that had to be, you know, your own uh, mm-hmm. standard. Uh, personally, if somebody is not saved, right there is a questionable thing. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because the reason why they can treat you right and they can be to you as Christ one is what they have. Mm -hmm. nobody can give you what they don't have. So Mm -hmm. if they are not saved and their standard is not God, then it's very hard for them to be otherwise, Mm -hmm. you know? So that is something that you want to, you know, uh, put it, let it be, you know, Mm -hmm. in your mind and very strong, you know, about it, Mm -hmm. you know, very strong about it because, if you are talking about the future, as, as you are saying that now everything is the long way around, mm-hmm. then you really want to consider somebody mm-hmm. who is in God, you know, who is, a, a, who is saved. It's very, very important. Mm-hmm. Please, if you have a question, uh, uh, thank you so much, Sister Linda, watching from Jamaica. How are you? Uh, good to see you here. God bless you so much, woman of God. So please, if you have a question, um, I ask if you have any contribution, those of you who have a teenage in your house, you have been, your children are grown now, and uh, whatever you did that really helped you uh, for, for them to be in the good books of the Lord. Can you please share it with us, <laughs> especially uh, uh, those our wonderful, wonderful uh, Christians home, which we, we are trusting God that our home will be an example you know, for people that are not saved, you know, we cannot um, let our home, especially when it comes to our teenagers, to be like out there. We cannot, you know, trust God, bring them to church, uh, speak the word of God, you know, into their life, pray over them, you know. And, and the reason why you were saying that she thinks uh, I'm right on some certain things because I, I pray more than I talk. I am, I am that parent. I pray more than I talk. So when I utter a word, I know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not a parent who is always talking, talking, talking. I spend more time, you know, with God concerning a lot of things. And especially when it comes to my family, I spend more time with the Lord. And I always tell God, you gave me these children. You gave me these children. All their names were a covenant. I remember when I was pregnant with Uria and we chose the light and, you know, the name, the light of God. She's the, our first one who is going to bring the light into our life. And in the labor room, I remember it was so tough and I couldn't even push again. And the nurse, you know, if it was in the U.S., they could have cut me. But I happened to be in England, uh, London, and they, they have a little bit, you know, when it comes to them. The midwife was like, you can do this, you can do this. And I told God, if you help me, you know, to come to this, this child is for you forever. You know, and I have that covenant with God. And it wasn't even a minute or two she came. And so after now, when anything happened, I go to God. I'm like, God, you know, I have a covenant with you. I remember when she was going to school with scholarship and everything. I'm like, God, no, no, no. You created this world. You have money somewhere. And this is your child. Remember the covenant I have with you 18 years ago. Make things happen. And how things happen so blows my mind. You know, so I have, I, I have those things with the Lord. So I pray a lot and I trust God for everything. So when I come out and I say, hey, this, I know what I'm talking about. You know, so it's, it's, it's very important as Christian mothers that we set a standard in our home 
and we, we trust God. We are in partnership with God concerning our children. And we cannot behave as the world. You know, we, we cannot behave. You cannot give a condom to your child. If you're a Christian mother and you're giving a condom to your child, show me where in the Bible did, did Abraham give condom to Isaac? I mean, tell me. Don't tell me because it's, we are living in, in, in this time. No. We are living in this time, but the word of God still stands. The word of God is still the word of God. And God expects us. Okay, he told Abraham, I know, I can trust you, Abraham, that you will bring your house well. Can God trust in us that we will be able to bring these children up in him? You know, and that's what I'm talking about. So let's continue to trust God. And I know that God will help us to uh, really do a wonderful job when it comes to, to our children. Uh, do you think dating can be destructive when it's not handled well? Oh, do yeah. you think dating can be destructive For when sure. it's not? Yeah. Um, so with my friend groups, we decided to win into college because first off, school, we were in like AP classes. We didn't have time. Okay. And the people who were in relationships were in like the like simpler classes. When you're in like AP and honors, you don't have time because you're spending most time on projects extracurricular you're going around trying to get like as many accommodations for college as mm -hmm. possible especially junior year yeah. junior year is like one of your like most toughest years because you're like really setting up your um senior year mm -hmm. so that when you're, it's time for you to shift from senior year to college it's much easier and smoother so you're like working twice as hard in junior year and you don't have time i literally remember just coming home at eight for like extracurricular activities staying at the school until like four doing art club all these sorts of stuff i did not have time at all so i think if you have like a relationship that is also very distracting because you have to ch choose what like what you're going to dedicate your time to okay. either you're going to dedicate it to your relationship or you're going to dedicate it to a school mm -hmm. And which, which is very, very important point, you where you are. Because even last week, I, I think I, I said it, that depending on what they are doing and the purpose of, of um, the um, dating, you understand? Depending on what you are doing, as you said, that you didn't have a lot of time. So, and I think it was Sister Joy who was saying that um, she told the daughter that when boys ask you to go out, we tell them, I have a date with math, English, and science. Yes. We used to say that. We used to say <laughs> okay. that. Uh, yeah. I'm choosing to accommodate for my school. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> it, 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 it can be. It, it really can be a very, very uh, distracting, you know, if um, it's not handled well, you know. So um, that, and that's when the purpose comes in. You have to ask them. If they come to you or you get to know that this is what they plan doing, the talking comes in again. The purpose. What is the, their purpose here? What, uh, you know, if it's just a friendship, you know, oh, hi, how are you? Um, oh, let's go and play, you know, volleyball. You know, those things. Oh, we are going to a movie, a new movie have come. Can we just... You know, because in my house, that was most of the things they do. You know, going to watch movie, uh, uh, pizza, those things. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. They know when, you know, to go to their uh, books and when to have time for, to play and build friendship and those things. And I, I, I love, and there is nothing, nothing, nothing wrong when they get into no the opposite says, getting to know them, there's nothing wrong because we also have to remember that out of all those friendships they will build, those are going to be, you know, potentials, you know, so there is nothing, nothing wrong with it. But you have to let them know the purpose of every, every friendship they are building, the purpose of the, they wanted to go for a date and everything. And it is going to distract what they are up to, especially when it comes to school, 
Because in my home, I tell them, hey, school is your full-time job. <laughs> okay? School is your full-time job. You don't pay any bill. You are not responsible for anything. Not even your own life you are responsible for. <laughs> so school is your full-time job. So, I mean, you here will tell you, I am very strict when it comes to their grace. There are some grace is not welcome in my house. Simple as that. That is my standard. Okay, you cannot come home with C. I don't know how on earth you eating for free, you doing everything for free, and you come home with C. You have to explain why you get C. I, I mean, they will tell you I am that straight. Because I don't know why. If you are devoting your time to study and study where there's no way you can get C. It, it, it's, it, it's unacceptable. You understand? It's, it's unacceptable. So even B sometimes is unacceptable, depending like if you are all a student and all of a sudden you are getting B. No, you have to explain why you are getting B. And if there's something, you know, that is trying to steal your attention, I will take it off. I, I, I will take it off. And I, as a parent, I think that is some of the rights we have to exercise to make sure that what some of us couldn't have, okay, we are giving it to them. If my child gets to my age and behaving like me, I have failed. They have to get to my age and be better than me. Because as I'm sitting here, most of the things that, by the grace of God, I've exposed to and the things that I'm doing, my parents couldn't do it. And it's because of what they gave to me. So when I, my child gets to my age, they have to be better and greater than me. And that's what we are trying to, to trust God to achieve here. So they cannot just play when it comes to their education, their time, and everything. It's very, very important. So once again, I don't know the age that you are comfortable at, you know, as a parent to let your teenage date, you know, but it all depends on their maturity. And the maturity, how they see things, how they consider uh, other people, how they consider things, how they communicate, how do they understand, you know, when it comes to emotions, you know, how do they handle their emotions? Are they crying babies? They're going to be crying on a boy for just, you know, looking at them in their eyes and they will start crying. You know, all those things. <laughs> you, we have to uh, consider all those things, okay? So um, hopefully this show has helped you to really know what you do as a parent. Um, but one of the things that you cannot compromise is the standard that you want to set home. Set a standard home. Let your children know what they can do and what they cannot do. As you said, we didn't even uh, start communicating early about those things, but she knew exactly what to do and what not to do. So it's very, very important that you set a standard home that they, your children will know that this is no no when it comes to us as a family, or this is acceptable. And it's, it's not like you, you, you being unreasonable. A very, very reasonable atmosphere, a very, very um, good atmosphere that everybody is free, but they know what you have set down. And it's based on the word of God. It's based on your beliefs in God. It's, it's, it's based on what you, what God has done in your life and all those things. We cannot just compare ourselves to the world out there. We are the light of Christ and our light have to shine better than uh, our people out there so they can know uh, the light that we carry, you know. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Yuri, you, what do you want to say to women of influence, any teenager watching right now and uh, maybe um, trying to figure out uh, what to do, what do you advise them, um, what have helped you, the waiting, you know, deciding to do things mm -hmm. right at the right time and doing everything, um, as the Bible says, that do it 
you know, uh, rightly and um, in the right way. So what do you have to tell a teenager or a mother encouraging us what to do when it comes to uh, you guys? Well, <laughs> face your books. <laughs> like, that's all I can say. Like, literally face your books because mm. honestly, right now, there's nothing a boy or a girl can offer to you right now because like first of all you're still living with your parents i'm not even sure if you're um financially independent so like no. literally like, you're you not so focus <laughs> on your books get make something of yourself mm. work on yourself build on yourself and just keep on doing what sh you need to do to get yourself into a good standing in college and like go for your dreams first like literally when you go for your dreams everything else will follow because a high standard man a high standard woman is attracted to success so when you work on yourself and you are getting your accolades and mm -hmm. accommodating and working and just living your best life it, everything will come everything will follow Yes, yes. So uh, thank you um, once again for joining us uh, today. Um, next week, we will look at um, cohabitation. Uh, Actually, that, that, one, that one will not be, you know, for uh, teenagers. It will be for actually the 20s, um, the 20s and, and um, you know, single. Why, is, it, is it good, you know? as a, a Christian lady to co, you know, have it with somebody that you are not married to. And what is the purpose of it? We, we would want to look into it because you see all these things, uh, it's lead to one another. You know, uh, a teenager, one day you will grow. And if you are a teenager now and you don't even know the purpose of dating and you don't know the importance of it and all those things, be, be, and you are sleeping with somebody even in, in your teenage year, then you see it lead to, to your 20s. That you'll be in your 20s and the same, you know, uh, things continue to happen. Because you didn't lay a good foundation, it leads to one thing or the other. So, I mean, once I'm here, I want to really use our time to look at all those things because there's a lot that God has for us. And some, some of these small, small things sometimes uh, block our blessing that we don't know, you know. And then we see uh, 20s, you get to your 30s, then you are not married. Then now you become a, a prayer project in church and you are praying and nobody is coming. It's because of the foundation, you know, you lay. And it's, it's good to just look into those things and trust God that we will learn something out of it and make it right for our own future. So thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you here next week, uh, back again, same time at 12. And God bless you so much. Please go out and be a powerful woman and man of influence God I call you to be. If there is any time that you want to be influential, this is the season and this is the time. And make sure that whatever is coming out of you is lifting some, somebody up. It's, it's giving somebody a direction. It's helping somebody to know that Jesus is still Lord. Every aspect of your life has to be very powerful and influential. God bless you so much. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.